In this video, I will show you how to edit like magnets media and we'll create this crazy 3D intro. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a tutorial on magnets media, so I'm super excited for this one. If you want to learn even more about this, get the project file of this tutorial and the project files of all the other tutorials on my channel, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description. You will learn advanced editing techniques, how to get clients, and you will also get clients from me and you will get access to the editing challenge. Of course, much, much more. Do check the link out in the description and let's jump into it. Now I have Blender open. We're gonna do this in Blender because this is all 3D. So first I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna hit Shift X to delete this. We just have a whole clean scene to start with. And also make sure you save your project. Now I have a few assets here. Basically, these are all 3D models. And I found these on Sketchfab. I do know for a fact that the editor used, I do know for a fact that the editor used some paid packs. These are all free objects. And if you're not in the pro community, you can still join along. Just join the free community, click the assets link and you can download these assets too. I'm just gonna start with the street model just to get the scene in. So let's just drag this in, import it. And there we go. We already have a scene we can just scroll with our scroll wheel to zoom out a bit and use the middle mouse button to orbit around now you might see that this is all gray there is actually a texture we can just change our viewport shading to material preview here in the top right it will lag a bit and it will load all the materials as you can see now it's not the most prettiest we can actually adjust this later on but this should actually work now i have these buildings let's also drag these in just press import and as you can see there are six buildings now we can use all six of them or we can actually create a landscape of them i'm just going to select one so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go to our layers i hold shift and then click on the eye icon and just make sure to turn off the street so it's just a bit easier what we can see here and then what we can do we can just select a couple uh, for example these hit shift x delete and then delete them let me just quickly check which one i really like i think they're all quite cool but i still like the middle one the most so I'm just going to select the left one, shift X, delete, and the right one, shift X and delete. And we have our building. Now, as you can see, the orbit point is not perfect, but that's actually fine. Now let's turn the street on again. So hold shift and click on the eye icon. And there we go. We have our cool building in the middle of the street our house in the middle of the street now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold shift and click on the model again as you can see the origin is not perfect but that's fine we can just move it now and we just drag it a bit more to the back i'm gonna press r for rotation press z to do it on the z axis and let's see maybe something like this just trying to make it a bit more straight let's move it a bit more to the left and we got our building in the middle of the street i think that already looks really cool now let's drag in our character we can just drag this in there we go and just make sure we press append now you get this selection window in my opinion the easiest is to just go to collection and then click on collection and press append this will make sure the whole collection is imported and this will import our figure we can just drag this more towards the beginning of the street maybe something like here and as you can see it's way 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 too big so we just have to scale it down by going into the scale and just scaling it down by a lot just make sure that this is somewhat relatively small also looking at the other buildings as you can see i think this is somewhat a window so make it maybe even a bit more small something like this that's perfect cool let's move this a bit i'm just going to press shift d uh, which will duplicate it and then we can just move it we can even press y to just move it on the y axis let's do that for a bit and let's move it all the way here then let's zoom in a bit hold shift and middle mouse button to move around and then let's see where we can place this person i want to place it actually inside of this because i think that looks really cool yeah this is super dope i think it's even a bit too big for this scene so maybe here i'm gonna scale it down a bit more so here i'm gonna scale it down a bit more something like this now i can also press rotate or press r and then rotate it along this axis let's move one here that guy looks creepy right maybe something like this let's move it a bit more towards the back hit shift d to duplicate it press x to move it on the x axis and then press r to rotate it and then z to rotate it on the z axis maybe something like this of course these arms look horrible but we can move that a bit later on now we need two more things and that's the wooden table so we have a table here let's drag that into import gltf that's cool let's move this a bit I'm just gonna zoom in, make sure that this is also the right size. 
which it is definitely not. <laughs> Let's also scale this down a bit, maybe to something like this. And I'm gonna move this to bloop and bloop. There we go. Very, very nice. Now I just need my last model, which is the blueprint. Let's drag that in too. Press append. And again, collection. I'm just gonna select this collection. It should work fine. Let's see, it's way too big. Let's move this. Let's move this up a bit so we can see it. It looks so cool. Oh, and of course you can customize it by changing these textures. So for example, changing the blueprint, but also changing the jacket of the character. For now, I'm just gonna keep it like this. Let's scale this down, pressing the scale icon or press S. Let's move this a bit. Probably have to move this down a bit. Press R for rotate, X, Z. You can also hold control to make it snap in place. Then let's align this a bit better. Now, I'm not sure, maybe I'm gonna remove a couple of these. Let's move this a bit. Yeah, there we go. I think this already looks super cool, but again, we have too much blueprints. Uh, so we can always go into these blueprints. We can also go in our layers panel, of course, and select a few. Uh, so let's see, we see here plane. So let's delete plane 009 by just clicking on the layer, pressing X. And let's see which more, 13, 10, six, five, number three, the first one. And then we still have these two at the top. We can also just click on them and then hit X, delete, and then X, delete. There we go. So we have these really cool blueprints. And like I mentioned, you can customize it, but let's keep it like this. Now we did the whole scene setup, which is already really good, but of course we want to make it look nice. We want to animate it, which we're gonna do now. First, we're gonna add a new camera. So we're gonna go to add camera. The camera will be created at the center point, as you can see. So we can just move this to our character. Let's move it up a bit. And as you can see, our camera appears here. Let's go to the object properties of the camera. Let's set the X axis to 90 degrees, the Y axis to zero, and the Z I'm gonna set to 180. And let's just move this a bit towards here, maybe a bit here on the side. And now press zero on your numpad. If you don't have a numpad, you can also just press zero on your keyboard and that will show the active camera view. This already looks really dope. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rotate the Z axis to rotate it towards our character. There we go. Now I'm gonna move it a bit down. I'm also gonna move it a bit more to the back, maybe a bit more to the left. There we go, cool. And now let's set some keyframes. So I'm just gonna set keyframes for the X, Y, and Z, and also for the X, Y, and Z of the rotation. Now I want to start animating, of course, but as you can see, our timeline is still 250 frames, which is a bit too short in my opinion because let's say our animation is 25 frames per second and we want to have an animation for at least 15 seconds. That means we need 375 frames. So let's set this to 375. And this of course also depends a bit on the voiceover you're working with. But let's set this to 375 first. We can now also drag our timeline out a bit so we can see more. And since we set our first keyframe, we can go a bit further, for example, to 100. Let's move the camera a bit. Let's rotate the Z axis. We can actually type in 180 because I already know it wants, I want it to be straight. And let's move this a bit to the back and maybe a bit to the right. Cool. Now let's set a keyframe and let's set a keyframe for the rotational axis too. And let's just quickly play this, what this will look like. Not bad at all, but as you can see here, it's not perfect. I think it goes a bit too close towards him. So we can actually just go into the center and then for example, move it a bit more from him and let's set a keyframe. And if we now play it, as you can see, it's a nicer and smoother animation. Now, once it's here, I want it to fly over, go above and go through the building. It's quite a quite a rough animation, so let's see if we can do this quite quick. Also set it to 170. Now you can manually adjust it here, or you can also go out of the camera view by pressing zero again, and then just moving the camera. That's also a fine way to work. So we can also just move it around, hold shift, middle mouse button. Let's move it towards this. Let's move it in the building. Let's move it down a bit. That's dope. And now I want to set the X rotation to zero so it aims down. Let's just set keyframes again for everything. And now press zero to be in the camera again. And now I just want to quickly see what this will look like. I think already super cool. I do think the rotation goes a bit too soon. So what I'm gonna do is before it actually moves here. So once it's around here, I want it to still be straight. So I'm just gonna move it up a bit to something like this set a keyframe let's play this again cool really really cool now i do think that this animation now goes a bit too too harsh i would say 
So maybe just select this keyframe and let's drag this out a bit. Now, once it's here, it's exactly what we want. Uh, let's go a bit further. And then I'm just gonna move it down through this whole alley. And I'm just gonna set a keyframe for the Z axis. Now that might sound weird. And that's because I want to actually adjust the X and Y a bit. I don't like where it ends. So let's go back to our first keyframe and let's see if we can move it a bit maybe towards the left and also a bit more towards the back so we don't reveal too much yet maybe even let it go through here so let's reset these keyframes so it goes down and then once it's here let's rotate it on the x rotation let's set a keyframe now we're still not seeing enough we don't see this people because we just see what's in this frame now of course we can make the camera more wide angle i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna go back to this keyframe again and i'm just gonna move it to the last frame something like here let's set a keyframe so we can see both of the guys perfect i'm gonna delete this last keyframe we don't need it now i'm still not the biggest fan of this part but we can actually adjust this by going into the animation tab and then you can see this dope sheet at the bottom we can also go to the left and change this dope sheet to a graph editor if you're familiar with after effects then this is really nice to work with we can literally just open our object transform here and then we can see all the keyframes that we set and what is also nice is that we can literally just disable a certain axis so for example x y and z location we don't need in this case we need to look at the x rotation now let's just scale our window a bit so we can see what's happening here you can just drag this up here select the x rotation and here we go as you can see it's really really straight so what we have to do is select this line right click interpolation mode and then bezier i hope i say this right but as you can see now we have a handle here uh, which means we can smooth it in a bit it's already way better and anyway but we could even drag this handle a bit something like this and if we now play it as you can see it will really be way smoother and we can do the same with the position i also think it stops a bit too abruptly here so we can go to the y location let's turn the x rotation off we don't need that now and we can drag this keyframe a bit more towards the end so as you can see this will make this curve way smoother it won't make it stop maybe we can drag it to the back a bit more and if we now press zero we can even see what's happening here as you can see a rotation around our character it will shoot up and go through this and that looks so cool right i still think the rotation actually goes a bit too quick we can drag that keyframe out definitely to around here or something so let's go to the x rotation once more and let's just drag this out a bit and also drag this i'm just gonna delete this keyframe by pressing x and i'm gonna drag this curve out a bit and if we play it now let's see it again as you can see it goes up it goes really smooth down and there we go now i actually wanted to be done with this rotation already so let's maybe drag this out a bit cool now we can always move these characters later on but what is nice is that we have our timing ready a bit now now i actually want to go to the posters so let's just set a keyframe for everything again here so y x and also the position and then let's go a bit more further now that we're busy with this anyway and let's just move this towards the front with the y position set a keyframe and set the x rotation to zero actually we need to move it even further something like this again click the keyframe icon and click the keyframe icon for the x rotation now if we play this we'll go down first we'll rotate a bit and it will slowly go to our blueprints not ideal yet as you can see it's already rotating here so we can actually now that we're still in it click on the x rotation and drag this curve out a bit so it's just staying straight for a while and that's really really smooth Let's also quickly go to the X rotation, turn the X rotation off. And I'm just gonna select this last keyframe and I just want to drag this out a bit. We can also zoom in by dragging this bar. Now let's keep it straight, something like this. So let's play this quickly. Nice, nice and smooth. Now let's go back to our layout view and let's make our scene look a bit better. First, I want to add a sun. Now in the example, you can see a really bright, cool sun and we're gonna recreate that. So I'm just gonna go to add mesh uv sphere which will create a ball let's press zero to go out of our camera view and let's rotate this now press the dot which will center the object and let's zoom out a bit and we have this ball here in the center of our scene let's move this a bit maybe towards the back we'll shift middle mouse button and that's cool first thing i'm gonna do is right click shade smooth to make this a smooth ball and i'm just gonna scale it up by going into the skill and making it really big like a big orb something like this looks cool perfect now let's go to the material options 
click new and then on service i'm gonna change this to a emission and let's change the color to like a nice orange something like this and let's set the strength to maybe 10 hit enter that's cool and then we have a cool orb we can now go into the move tool we can move this and we can also animate this by setting a keyframe i just go into the object let's move it down so it's below our scene and let's set a keyframe for this. Maybe drag this keyframe out a bit so it starts a bit later. And for example, let's go to around 100, 120 where the camera also starts moving. And let's move this glowing orb high in the sky. Something like this, it's cool. And let's set a keyframe to make sure you set the keyframe for the Z axis not for the x-axis uh, so let's see i'm just gonna adjust this a bit if i play it now you will see it will go up and that looks really really cool now this will already emit light but not enough so i'm also gonna add a light and then a sunlight and let's move this sunlight towards this glowing orb let's set the x rotation to 90 degrees and now as you can see nothing really changed that's because we're not in the right shading option so go to viewport shading and change this to the rendered view. And as you can see, we see a dark city. And that's exactly what we want because what we can do now is go into our light, increase the strength. And as you can see, if we turn this up, this will light up our scene. Now I can also change the color a bit, not too much, just a tint of orange. If we now press zero, we'll go back into our camera view. We can see a bit more what's happening here. Now I'm gonna turn the shadow option off. As you can see, it will lighten up the whole scene. Let's turn it a bit down to maybe something like this. Let's also make it a bit more warm now that we're looking at this. This already looks super, super nice. Of course, we can go into our camera, turn on the depth of field, and then go into the depth of field, change the f-stop to 1.4, and change the focus distance to something a bit more close. And this will already be super cool. Now you can also add a HDRI. Basically an HDRI is a background in your world. I'm using Blender Kit, but you can also use HDRIs online. We can literally just search for city. Let's search on free first. And ideally I want like a dark city or empty city. That's also fine. I think this even works better. Let's just click on this. I'm gonna set the resolution quite low. Just press okay. And this will really add something to the scene. Now I also want to change the focus distance a bit here. We can also animate this by setting a keyframe. And speaking about animation, this person also looks horrible. We also want to animate that. And because this model is rigged, it's super easy actually. We can just click on the model. And ideally you do this in the animation tab. Now, if we find our person here in the layer panels, which is called the armature, and this is the first one, and we change the object mode to pose mode, we can actually really easily animate this person. We can just go and click on this box here. We can click on the auto keying mode. And then if you press G, you can just move this around as you can see. And if you press X or Z, it will just move on the X axis or on the Z axis. In this case, I can actually just move it first to the inside and then hit Z, then hit G, Z to move it down. That's cool. And now I also want to rotate it a bit since this hand is definitely in a weird position. So just press R to rotate it and then Y, because I just want it on the Y axis, we can just move it down just like that. And we can do the same with the other one, just selecting this box, press G again. And you can also actually just move it freely a bit, something like this, that should also work. Click and press R and then Y again, uh, because we want to do it on the Y axis. Now this is perfect. If we go a bit further, you can see it resets. It's because there are some keyframes here. Let's select these, press X and delete keyframes. Yeah, perfect. And if you now want to animate it, we can just go a bit further and then press G again, since we still have this in the hand and then we can move it a bit, something like this. And this will automatically keyframe it, which is so cool. If we now play it as you can see it will just move its hand up and you can always select these keyframes and move them a bit or select them all and right click interpolation and then bezier this will make it a bit more smooth and we can also just go to the dope sheet and then just select these keyframes and move them out a bit now of course we also have to do this with our other characters and then you get something like this i just added a bit of a color grade and i animated the other characters and as you can see you can create these crazy animations i think it's so so cool and if you want this project file then do join the social creative club pro you will also get access to the course where you learn advanced editing techniques so that you can become a pro editor but also learn how to get clients yourselves and even get clients from me again link is in the description down below of course leave a comment of what you want to see next and then of course like always a big big thank you to everyone that's supporting me i really really appreciate it then thanks for watching and then i'll see you next time bye